Hi everyone. I want to share with you a mantra that um, people have been chanting for a really long time. A lot of you know about it um, and some of you probably don't. So I just want to introduce it to you. It's a, some call it the Maha Mantra, which means in this tradition, or there's many traditions that, and lineages that actually use this um, mantra because I think that there's something very um, mystic about it, mystical about it, that it, it definitely is used, of course, in Hinduism um, and in different sects of Hinduism, but also it has this mystical energy to it. Like a lot of the saints in the lineage that I come from, <clears throat> they didn't, they weren't Hindu or, you know, Muslim. They, they might have been, but um, on, at some point, but then, you know, mostly they just like Jesus, for the record, um, I mean, as far as what we know, was really like anti-establishment. And, you know, there's a lot going on in India right now. Um, my, you know, close friends live there and we carry all these traditions. Um, and, and hopefully part of what's happening is that we can, you know, really use the practice not just to liberate ourselves, um, which I believe is connected to the collective, but also to remember, you know, that there's lots of intense warfare happening, I mean, everywhere, but, you know, there are people dying in riots right now in India. Um, you know, their prime minister is, you know, worse than Trump, you know, and it's like, believe it or not. And actually when Trump was in India a few days ago was when, you know, a lot, not obviously it wasn't related, like, it was a problem. We obviously on an energetic level, it seems related. Um, but that was when, you know, a lot of these riots were, were starting to happen. And, and, you know, they're using these names of God, um, these mantras as they're like, you know, killing people. It's like the darkest aspects of humanity, you know, um, arises. And I think, we use these pure energies not as a way to avoid them, but as a way to like become stronger to be able to look at them and to be able to look at the ways they live in us, even if they're very different um, and, you know, work with that. And then also to not just turn away from the the suffering constantly because it's, it's out there. I mean, it's also within us. I think we pretend a lot of times, like, because we're spiritual people, that we don't have our own suffering. And that just creates more separation between us that if those of you that know me know that I'm not interested in <laughs> um, pretending like we're not experiencing suffering. Um, I think it's a human, it's very human to experience suffering. And, and we, most of us, have a lot of privilege, you know, and don't, are not um, facing into death, I mean, physically in, in every given moment, you know, or the fear of it, even though um, obviously on some level that's there too. And I think that we um, can use these practices as ways to help us, um, help us be with that, be with the intensity of the unknown and, and to be able to sink our our bodies and our hearts into it in a way that's going to help uplift us to to serve others, but also um, to just be tuned into that that cosmic way that we can um, support um, and take action. You know, there's it's kind of two things. One of the things I learned about in in this from this tradition uh, is something that doesn't really cross. Uh, context culturally like if you've never been to India or even any third world country it's kind of hard to really teach this aspect of um, being of service in a certain way but or if you unless you're just like wired like that which a lot of us I know I wasn't um, but something that I really kind of came to was in certain moments I would just become debilitated by my own trauma when there was when I was needed you know like if there was an emergency or something like that it's like I had become so overwhelmed with my own experience I wasn't able to like see what was going on it was like I was blinded you know and um it was just from a lot of the trauma that I've you know been passed down 
And through this experience of healing that I've been in for many years now, it's freed up enough of that where I am definitely more willing to be with discomfort, even though there's continuous edges with that. It's not like, oh, great, discomfort, bring it on. You know, there's always little sneaky ways that, um, you know, show up and that's fine because all of this has to happen in layers um, or we die um, out of the inability to handle it emotionally, <laughs> um, at least as far as I can tell. And so, you know, one of the things that we can do in our practices of, of writing, of meditating, of yoga, of spirituality is to become more willing and become more willing to be with one another or in a moment of need to be able to like take action. You know, I can remember I was driving in, in Topanga Canyon where I lived at the time a few years ago and a car up ahead that was coming towards me flipped over. Like it was driving down this canyon, it's one super windy road that goes uh, to Panka Canyon Boulevard that goes from the, the valley all the way down to the ocean. And I was driving up it and I had no shoes or socks on because that's really how you drive sometimes when you live in California. <laughs> and I saw up ahead this car that was coming down completely flip, um, hit the side of the mountain and flip over up on top of itself. And the, there was one car in front of me and it stopped. And then I stopped and the car in front of me, there was somebody in the car. I don't remember if it was a, uh, a man or a woman. They rolled the window down and they were kind of yelling. And I just, I just got out of the car and I ran over to the car and, you know, this girl came crawling out with her phone in her hand and just like landed in my arms. And, you know, I just stood there and... It was intense, you know, and it felt like I could even sense like these angels that like pulled her out of the car and like, you know, like placed her on my body in a certain way. And and then another, I actually witnessed this twice in the matter of two years. It was it was odd. Um, another time when I was at the yoga studio, I was chanting after one of my classes by myself, and out the back doors of this yoga studio that I teach at, they're all windows, and I saw this car just completely flip upside down. And I just moved my harmonium to the side and I ran out the door and, you know, the guy, there was another man there that was pulling this man out of the car, you know, and, and both times, and I'm not saying this to be like, oh, I helped save somebody, you know what I mean? Like, that's not the point. It's much more subtle than that. And if you can't, you know, hang with that, that's fine. You don't have to. But what I'm speaking to is something that I know in my own body and in my own system I wouldn't have been able to do before. And I'm not judging that to say like, well, that's bad. But it's like, what does it mean to me? You know, and this is personal to each of us to be available and to be willing to like, to show up. And for each of us, that looks different, you know, maybe. And it's not like I thought like, well, I really want to be able to save people when their car flips over. Like I could have never imagined that would happen. But I know that my willingness in that moment, as opposed to just my own trauma arising in my fear, and maybe it was also dumb. I could have ran up to that girl's car. It could have blew up. I could have died. I don't know, you know, but the, I think we, we've all become so like deeply connected spiritually in a certain way. And then when it comes to being a human, it's like super hard, you know, and, and we don't know what to do, or we don't know how to like risk in that way that I think is really um, is really helpful, you know, to be, um, to be willing. I know I keep using that word like willing and available, but that's kind of what it feels like to me. It's like, it's this impulse to be like, Hey, you know, like, no, or like, you know, then it comes down to, if you hear somebody, um, you know, being racist or bigoted and like, it's like, that's the same impulse to be like, Hey, you know what? That's really inappropriate. And like, that's really harmful what you're sharing and, or the way you're saying that, you know, or, you know what, like when you said that, it really hurt me in this way, as opposed to like the inability to, to, to name our own experience. For me, it all comes from that same place and it's taking years and probably will take the rest of my life <laughs> to be able to, you know, distill um, what it means to be authentic and to be in an authentic expression of being a human. Um, but I feel like it's a journey that's worth taking. So I began talking about this mantra and 
oftentimes when I share, that's what happens. Like I have an intention and then, you know, something comes through and I really trust that that's what needs to be shared in the moment. And um, sometimes it gets me in trouble as a teacher because <laughs> not everyone likes it, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> not all the time. Sometimes it is really hurtful when, you know, people don't like you and whatever. I'm a human. But most of the time, you know, I really, I trust. And I, like I said, I've worked hard enough to get to a place where I don't need things to be perfect or planned um, to be willing to share um, because I, I am a facilitator of people's authentic expressions and the freedom and the liberation of that. And so if I'm not willing to fail, I can't expect anyone else to be. And um, yeah, I'm not that this is a failure, but anyway, we'll do a little chanting to close this. And if you wanted to just come and uh, receive some, some transmission around um, the willingness to fail, I guess, <laughs> um, I think that's what ultimately this this was really about so just sending love to all of our brothers and sisters and beings um that are over in india and really all over the world that are experiencing a lot of um intense fear and trauma and um and a lot of hate you know there's a lot of hate happening um right now so if you want to chant with me you can find a comfortable seat and let your eyes close Krishna, 
So thank you for joining me. Um, let me know any insights or anything that arises for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, what it means to be willing to show up and to be available. And of course, this is a very much longer conversation um, that could go on and on. Um, but, you know, just, just to say that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, darkness in the world and that your light and your hope really matters, which sometimes our hope looks like hopelessness. Um, our hope disguises itself as hopelessness sometimes, I think, so we could um, really tend to the things that need to be tended to in order for us to be more fearless. So I'm sending you all lots of love and um, I hope to hear from you soon.